Did you know that your DNA might carry traces of our extinct relatives, the Neanderthals? Modern humans and Neanderthals share a fascinating history, but a recent discovery takes this story to a whole new level. Join us as we unravel the secrets of Europe's earliest settlers and their surprising connections to Neanderthals. According to the most widely accepted theory, modern humans left Africa around 60,000 years ago. Along their journey into Europe and Asia, they encountered and interbred with Neanderthals. This interaction left a genetic legacy, 2-3% to of Neanderthal DNA in people of non-African descent today. But what about the first modern humans to step foot in Europe? What was their relationship with Neanderthals? Let's start with the basics. Neanderthals were our closest extinct relatives. They first appeared around 400,000 years ago and lived until about 40,000 years ago. Far from the brutish stereotype, Neanderthals were sophisticated. They built shelters, crafted tools, and even created art and jewelry. Their strong, stocky bodies and large noses were perfect for surviving the icy climates of Ice Age Europe. Interestingly, they also had larger brains than modern humans, though their brains were wired differently. Fast forward to today. Two key archaeological sites, Zlaty Kuhn in Czechia and Ranis in Germany, have helped scientists piece together the story of Europe's earliest settlers. At Zlaty Kuhn, researchers discovered a 45,000-year-old skull belonging to an early modern human. At Ranis, 230 kilometers away, 13 bone fragments were found, revealing mitochondrial DNA from modern humans. But who made these tools? known as the Lincombian ranesian jersmanowician LRJ culture. Was it Neanderthals or modern humans? This question puzzled scientists for years. A breakthrough came when researchers from the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology analyzed the nuclear genomes of these remains. They found an incredible link. The individuals at Zlaty Kun and Ranis were part of the same extended family. They even discovered a mother-daughter pair and other distant relatives at the Ranis site. Genetic analysis revealed that these early Europeans likely had dark skin, dark hair and brown eyes, traits reflecting their recent African ancestry. But here's the twist. Despite their proximity to Neanderthals, their genomes showed no evidence of recent interbreeding. This contrasts with other early human groups in Europe, who did show signs of Neanderthal interbreeding. So what happened? Researchers believe the Zlaty Kun and Ranis populations may have taken a different migration route into Europe, avoiding regions heavily populated by Neanderthals. That doesn't mean they had no Neanderthal DNA. Shared ancestry points to an older mixing event that happened between 45,000 and 49,000 years ago, likely before they arrived in Europe. The Zlaty Kun and Ranis populations likely lived in small groups of only a few hundred individuals spread across vast areas. Despite their resilience and resourcefulness, they left no genetic legacy in modern humans. This distinct lineage represents a unique branch of our species that eventually disappeared. So what happened to the Neanderthals? They thrived for hundreds of thousands of years, but their story ended about 40,000 years ago. Climate change, competition with modern humans, and possibly new diseases may have sealed their fate. Still, their DNA lives on in many of us, a reminder of our shared evolutionary journey. This discovery sheds light on a fascinating chapter of human history, highlighting the complexity of our interactions with Neanderthals. It's a story of migration, adaptation, and survival, one that connects us to our ancient past in ways we're only beginning to understand. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more fascinating insights into our ancient history.